Boxing King Media, powered by BYD, Mr. Gareth A. Davies making a comeback. Uh, I felt like you, uh, you kind of seemed like you retired, Gareth, and you're back on the scene. Uh, do you want to tell the fans where you've been? No, I just had a, I had a cycling accident and I, I um, cut my head open, Was I ended up in A&E um, and had to recover. And, I, and and also it was a, it's been a little bit of a quieter time and I've just been just having a week and a half off recovering. I'm, I'm amazed that it feels um, like I've retired, like I didn't realise I was that noisy and busy in the space. But um, sometimes we need to take a little bit of time backwards and just reflect a little bit. And I always like to go outside the industry and go and study different things and and then come back. I've been writing a book as well called Call of the Warrior, finishing it off. Big coffee table book, 250 pages long, black and white photos of um, 28 essays of promoters, boxers, fighters um, of this era, as I say, called Call of the Warrior. So I've been finishing that off as well. So yeah, I have been in my man cave, um, just recovering a little bit and uh, just getting my head down and getting that work done. But there have been a few things going on. I know we haven't spoken for a few weeks. Johnny Fisher put a big number in on, on Alan Babich. I fully expected him to do. Glad to see Sky Nicholson retain her title. Jaron Boots Ennis look good. Um, who else has been in uh, action? Virtual gonna, tees look good. We're going to skip through some of these uh, when we jump into the questions. But most importantly, health-wise, you're all good now after your accident? I'm good, thank you. I did have a, a big cut over my eye and a big black eye and... Um, I think you saw some of the photos. I think I might have sent them yep. to you. So I'm, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm recovered now. And um, and I now have a... Um, uh, I'm going to get back on the horse, uh, the, the bike, so to speak, and uh, make sure I don't fall off again. Good, man. I'm glad to see that you're okay, Gareth. And I'm p- pretty sure one of the things you probably missed is questions from, from the fans. Oh, absolutely. I'd miss that. I mean, it, it's the highlight of my week. I know it is. Uh, I'm actually going to start with one where I think it's it's worth people hearing it from your mouth. Uh, somebody put saying, why are you reading at people's moronic comments? We all know he's a bit different, but show some respect. He's been in the game for some years. So I think this person is clarifying that it's you're happy to uh, to do this. It's a bit of banter. Well, I'm I'm glad my mother has uh, has come on to the comment section and supported me no i appreciate that that's a statement not a question and um this is my job it's what i do i'm i i'm involved with you and uh, and other people we're friends in the industry we're, we're colleagues and i like to do these interviews you've created this little forum of funny questions i know most of them you have to edit out because they're too rude to ask me yeah, or you're too polite to ask me. Then most of them involve me as a as a fanboy of Tyson Fury, the negative ones, and uh, how I'm, uh, you know, his 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 serving member of the media. But um, I'm as critical of him as anyone else, and um, he's as critical of me uh, as any other fighter as well. So um, yeah, but that's that's very kind of that person to say that. Yeah, uh, like I said, I just wanted to clarify that you know. Yeah, you're happy and it's a mutual thing. Uh, one of the regular listeners um, asked a, a question, Lee. He, he wants to know, who do you rate as the best world champion to come from the UK? We don't want to know why and how. We just want a name, Gareth. Go on, tell us who's who comes to your mind straight away. Joe Calzaghi, Nazim Hamid came to my mind straight away. Tyson Fury. Um Oh, Froch is up there. Um, said, Gareth, much as he's been one. battering me on social media recently. Um, but that's just Carl's style at the moment. Clickbait king, Cobra. Cobra the clickbait king. Um, God, there's your headline now, isn't it? Um, yeah. Um, but um, no, I've always got on very well with Carl. Um, Ken Buchanan. Um, you got a name one, Gareth? Josh Taylor had an amazing purple patch. Joe Calzaghi came to mind straight away. Okay, Joe Calzaghi is the man. A great pick, and I tell you what, he, he's one of the nicest retired boxers I've ever met. He's such a nice man. He's also fucking crazy, and I love that. Is he? I haven't seen his crazy side yet. Just see a Yeah, pick. he's crazy, Joe. He's Just fantastic. A polite man. That's it, uh, when you speak to him. Um, Gareth is the type of guy that would buy a famous person a cake. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I'd buy them, probably buy them a Basque cheesecake. A Basque cheesecake, okay. A Basque, as in Basque country, a Basque cheesecake, very thick um, pastry, um, soft pastry and a thick cheesecake. There you go. How about that? Nice one. Gareth is a type of guy that will put his heating on in the middle of summer. Oh, do you know what? That's a really funny one because I've got underfloor heating here and um, had to make sure I turn off my heating because it, I came back here one day when we had that heat wave and it had been on. I hadn't turned it off yet. I'm in a new residence and um, newish residence and um, hadn't had got around to turning it off. And it was about 26 degrees in the house. But no, I don't because it was very foolish because I couldn't work out how to turn it off I got it about one in the morning it's like 26 degrees in here and I sweated my way through the night but um, what, an, uh, what an interesting question yeah well, this one uh, I don't know if you're into guitars but Gareth is a type of guy who owns a bass guitar with five strings instead of four wow uh, I'm not but I'd love to and I and um, I've got a I've got a um, a little ukulele uh, but I don't have a guitar I've got a piano behind me i know you're always trying to get me to play it but i don't play it for public consumption yet i'm saving it for when i get my gig at the waldorf in london the waldorf hotel where i can play where they're having their teas and i'll put a little baseball hat on and some green glasses or something and um be in disguise but that that is one of my ambitions to play the piano but in public nice Hopefully, I can get get it recorded. Uh, somebody wants to know how old is. Gary? Do you have an instrument you play? Nothing. You could do the drums. You could do the. You yeah. could do the guitar. Yeah. Symbols, the xylophone, whatever it be. How old is Gareth? It's a mystery. Well, it will remain a mystery. Old enough to have grandchildren, but a very, very young grandfather. Yeah, that's, that's a great reply. That. Uh, Gareth is a type of guy who struggles to put a sentence together without saying um. Ooh. Um. Mm. Mm. I think there was a lot of ums in the last interview, that's why. I am a bit of an ummer. I can't help it. And it just rattles me when I look back. It's just it's just the uh, uh, um thinking process, isn't it? That's Unfortunately. It. And I didn't ask you the question that I, uh, I was just telling you about off camera. Too rude. Too rude, yeah. You, uh, that's an that's an off air, too blue question, I'm afraid. Involving Tyson Fury again, of course. Yeah. It is quite a funny question. If somebody wants to read it, they can go look at the last interviews in the comments. Uh, but it's quite funny. Um, right, let's jump into what's been happening. Um, I tell you, one of the first things I quickly want to touch on. You know, I know, I know you're a bit of a cricket fan, and I mentioned this to Eddie Hearn the other day as well. Jimmy Anderson retiring, all time great. Uh, it's fascinating that in a in a sport that obviously gets a lot of eyes, not as uh, probably yeah, in fact more than boxing, I'd say, because they they get bigger crowds and week in week out around the world. Depends what the match is. Depends what yeah. the test series is. Depends what, whether it's T Twenty or World Cup. Yeah, fair play. But England know. Australia is crazy here in the UK, isn't yeah. it? And it's on TV oh. everywhere. But this, guy... I loved it when India and Pakistan were playing the other day. That it all it all came to a halt. Why all the guys? I loved that. They were all watching to see how England did in the penalties. That was lovely, by the way. That I I love that multicultural nature of our country. I, I I love that. I just love it so much in this time when people don't think that we're multiculturally together. Do you remember? Do you see that the yeah, other I've day? Seen, I've seen that. Beautiful. Like that. Yeah, Everyone yeah. had piled into the bars. Yeah. Um, mainly Indian and Pakistani origin, British Pakistanis and British Indians. Just to watch that screen for the penalty. It was a beautiful thing, wasn't it? Yeah, and they were celebrating together as as, as the, the goals went in. So, yeah, that was good. You're talking about the uh, the uh, semi-final, aren't you? Yeah. Um, just drawing comparison from Jimmy Anderson's career, a guy that's retired at the top, um, never really um, got his name out there. Like, he's just never in the public eye. Yeah, he's an introvert, isn't he? He's an extrovert when he plays cricket, but he's very much an introvert, a very difficult character on the field. Um, and, okay. and as a swing bowler myself, um, and a nasty, vicious, medium-fast swing bowler, a uh, very, very aggressive character I was, almost like an alter ego when I played. I mean, ask anyone I played with or against. I was as aggressive to my own team as I was the opposition, believe it or not, bringing young players through and giving them a hard time. Um, 
the the thing is about Anderson, he really looked after himself. And uh, what is he, nearly 40? Um, 704 test wickets in the end. Um, and, yeah, just a metronomic, met, a bit metronomic, bold within himself in the last five to six years. Six years. Couldn't give it up. Probably has gone on a little bit too long, but still a magnificent bowler. Lords is an amazing place to bowl when you're a swing bowler because you've got the slope as well, um, which you can use for and against you. Um, the, the question I was going to ask you about him, Gareth, was um, could you compare him, you know, the way he's been, like I said, somebody who's just quietly gone about his business. Carl Zaghi. Uh, yeah. Carl Zaghi. Um, very reluctant him. public figure. Um, That's a very good comparison. Yeah, but very similar. I'm, I mean, I liked the Bothams. I liked the Imran Khans, the Capel Devs, the Richard Hadleys, the All Rounders. He wasn't a batsman in any way, Jimmy. Um, any way, shape, or form. I, 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 as an all rounder myself, I liked the All Rounders. I liked the, I liked the the, the fast bowling. Uh, swashbuckling batting characters but you know I didn't find Anderson the most thrilling um, bowler to watch actually but consistency wise longevity you can take nothing away from him one of the greatest of all time um, and just so consistent and it's amazing kept himself incredibly fit um, and kept his 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 counsel and kept himself very much to himself, like you say, stayed in his lane, was a cricketer uh, through and through, not not branching out into being a society figure or a, or a celebrity, never, never embraced that at all. But a lot of the cricket guys don't. And I think one of the things about cricket is it's so time consuming um, and they don't, and I, I, I um, Eddie Hearn was on Test Match Special last year, said some great things about how cricket doesn't promote itself as well as it should do. And I do agree with him on that. I think if you're in a country like India or maybe Pakistan, some of the leading players are such celebrities in life because that's their football. That's their soccer, if you like, their football. Um, and, and, and we see that with... Um, you know, cricket isn't the every isn't the sport for every man for every woman. It's it's a particular milieu. So um, it's, yeah, it's but very interesting. Uh, and like I said, I want to talk about a couple of different things because boxing it's not been that busy as it for the last couple of weeks. Donald Trump getting assassinated. What would you make of that? Well, try, try well and... attempted assassination. Yeah. It's terrible. Yeah. I saw it minutes after it happened. It's just disgusting. I've seen all the conspiracy but... videos. Look, someone shot his ear. To, to be able to do that, you can't fake that kind of thing going on. Um, and let's not forget, a lady lost her life. I know. At that event, two people were terribly injured. Um, people were terrified at it. Um, and, you know, like many other people, Trump's reaction to it, his moments of defiance, the fist... The blood coming down his face, the, the the yelling fight three times. It would probably win him the election in America now, um, because Americans love that. It, such an iconic moment um, captured by those photographers from Reuters, and and I think it was Reuters. Um, you know, with the with the American flag, the, um, the 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 fact that the the broad banners and the bright stars. Uh, right above him and his hand is up in salute it's uh, uh, I'm not, I don't want to get too point. political but it's yeah. just disgusting when people try and shoot someone like that it's just disgusting yeah you know you mentioned Imran Khan earlier he had he had something similar didn't he um I think they shot his leg yeah yeah, yeah. And, and also you know that 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 news about around Donald Trump was at the same time and I'm not being I don't want to be political about this was the same day that 141 Palestinians were died. There were there were um, uh, renewed assaults in Kharkiv, in Ukraine. I mean, 
you know, we don't talk about this. Well, we do privately, but oh, the world sometimes it's it's a very iniquitous place, you know, and people are fighting for power all the time. And, you know, I've, I've, I've just written essays, as I say, for this book that I'm doing about, you know, the life of um, Alexander Usyk, for example, and what a noble, stoical character he is and um, kind of reminding anyone that's going to read the coffee table book about how he, he served with the local, with the, the Kiev militia against the um, the Russian invasion. Some terrible things go on on our planet and it's a shame that it can't just be battled over on the sporting field where there's rules and regulations and, and it's finite and um, yeah, it's, it's, it's very sad. Wow, you're making me um, quite yeah. deep. Well, let's, let's jump onto the boxing, Gareth. I, I want to just touch on um, stuff because it's something I'm probably going to start doing a, a lot more. Just talk about stuff outside boxing because I think because the listeners are all men that watch other types of content as well. So I think I'd like to give them a variety of content and obviously they've got the option to watch it or not and everything will always be time stamped. Um, boxing wise, um, obviously Jaron on Ennis at the weekend for uh, Abanisin who took the fight at short notice. Um, what I want to know from you, Gareth, is from what you saw of him against a guy that came in at four weeks' notice. Uh, do you do you think he's a real deal? Obviously, he's had thirty odd wins. Uh, there's no massive names that really stick out on his record. Abanisin is probably the, the the biggest name on there now, but does he? Yeah. Still uh, is he? Well, look, he's, he's thirty two fights. So I think it's with twenty nine stoppages now. So. Yeah. Um, He's definitely been a dark horse in the in the division. I don't know why we weren't screaming for a Boots Ennis Terence Crawford fight. Um, we know that Crawford's now um, potentially being lined up. Well, he's fighting Israel Madrimov in Los Angeles on the Riyadh season edition of the American Los Angeles card on August the third. We know that he's being lined up to face. Um, Saul Canelo Alvarez in a fight. That's early next year, I believe, that fight's being lined up for. So, um, or, or first third of next year. So Crawford's tied up at the moment, but Boots Ennis against Crawford's a huge fight. But like you say, Boots Ennis hasn't got major names on his record yet. I think it'll work for him under Eddie Hearn and Matchroom because they'll really sell him. I think they'll bring him over here. I think he looked formidable again. He's a brilliant box fighter. He's very strong at 147. Um, you know, again, I can't fathom why he's gone so long. A lot of American fighters, it's the same as Shaka Stevenson. Um, if he if he doesn't renew his contract with Top Rank and he goes with with Eddie Hearn or with Matchroom, um, and goes on to the zone, I'm sure Eddie will bring him to the UK to give him a few fights here. There's Joe Cordina. There's um, there's there's a lot of fights at um, Sam Noakes even. Uh, people like that um, at, at uh, lightweight that he can fight. He doesn't necessarily need to be the, the biggest names, but I think there's tons of fans for him. I think Boots Ennis um, needed a big name. Like you say, Avanissian is, is arguably the biggest name, and that doesn't really say a lot in terms of the names that potentially, I mean, out there for him. I, I was going to pull up the... Um, the list of world champions in all the weight divisions. I said this a couple of weeks ago. My feeling is that um, my feeling is where is it? My, my feeling is that it might be up at super welterweight that he gets his big shouts. Errol Spence. Um, again, I don't think Terence Crawford's going to come back down to welterweight necessarily because if he's going to go up to middleweight or even super middleweight to fight Terence Crawford and that is uh, to fight um, Canelo and it is possible um, and it is being worked on then he might have to go up himself to super welterweight to get the big fights because out there there's Mario Barrios isn't there and apart from Crawford that's it that's the world champions um, Conor Ben is a possible opponent um, Eddie might be thinking about that but again we don't know what's happening with, with, with Conor Ben. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, I do think, I th I do think he's formidable. I really do think he's formidable. So he's definitely the real deal in Gareth Davis's eyes. Yep. He's the real deal so far. 
Okay, good stuff. We 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 need that elite level opponent. We need to see him in against an elite level opponent. Uh, we're going to jump on to uh, elite level. Uh, it doesn't get any more elite than the, the Gypsy King, Tyson Fury. Uh, obviously, there's always opinions and people talking about what he should do next. You know, we're still about six months away from his rematch with Usyk. Uh, Johnny Nelson said it in a few interviews recently, and he feels like he, he should change trainers. Uh, and I'm just curious, do you think he should tra change trainers? And if you do, uh, who do you think should take up the, the spot? Um... And I think them comments were based on the corner work, and which yeah, I've mean, talked about think, you know, listen, quite a lot. If you listen to the interviews, Peter Fury highlighted it, and I think even uh, Shane uh, did an interview with IFL. I think he kind of touched on it as well. Well, I think Shane was saying that just let there be simple voices in the corner. I think Sugar Hill Stewart and Andy Lee are a great combination. There's a lot of knowledge and a lot of skills and a lot of diversity in in both those men. Um, you know. Tyson Fury's got to go out there and produce a different type of performance against Alexander Usyk in December in their rematch, in their second iteration of the of the battle of, of, of the big men. Um, he can beat Alexander Usyk. I think Usyk is a marginal favourite going into the second bout. Um, he was a veritable winner the first time around. Um, Fury's got the right attitude going into it. He's got to put it on him, put it on him hard. He's going to take more risks in the second fight. I still think it'll be a close, hard fought contest. Um, I wouldn't change the, the, I wouldn't change the team. Um, but I think from what Shane was saying, I think they're quite happy with Andy Lee and, and Sugar Hill Stewart. Um, I think to change it now is probably not a great thing to do. Um, there was a bit of criticism of John, wasn't there? Um, that he was getting too passionate at the end, but it's a difficult one because he's always been around Tyson um, and and Ty Tyson respects his opinion and his view. Um, I thought Tyson won the last round anyway. Um, I scored the last round for Tyson. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 what I like about Tyson, I don't agree with all the things he said about Alexander Usyk, uh, like he's got an amateur style and this, that and the other, but what I do like is the attitude he's taking into the second fight. Um, I want him to win. I want to see him against Anthony Joshua. I want to see him against Anthony Joshua for the undisputed title. I want to see Joshua. I think Joshua will beat Daniel Dubois. I just think he's a level above him. I think he's in a great purple patch again in his career. I think it'd be a travesty for both Fury and especially for Joshua, if Joshua doesn't get to fight Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder in this era, because I don't see that Deontay Wilder fight happening uh, for Anthony Joshua now. I just don't see it happening at all, even though Joshua would still take it. Of course he would. Um, it seems crazy to think that those fights wouldn't happen in this era. Indeed. And and talking to Joshua there, a quick word on uh, Carl Foch and Peter Fury's uh, debate recently where they talked about uh, Dubois' potential tactics that he may put it on AJ. And, uh, you know, Froch uh, feels like since the first Ruiz fight, no one's put it on AJ. And that does happen. There's every chance, you know, in Froch's words, AJ crumbling because he doesn't like pressure. Uh, do you buy any of that? Yeah, well, Dubois doesn't like pressure either. And Joshua is one of the best finishers out there. And I think when he is, when he has got someone hurt, he's as, he's as good a finisher um, as Lennox Lewis was. And Lewis was a phenomenal finisher of opponents. Um, it's, of course, like, they're, they're both very explosive, heavy punchers in that division. So you've got to give Daniel Dubois a chance in the fight. But I just think that Joshua, on paper, I'd be crazy i'd be backing the outsider if i backed dubois to do it i'm not saying he can't do it and he may well do it but i just think joshua won't find it that difficult to hit dubois i think he's very composed at the moment i like the game plans that ben davison and lee wiley come up with for joshua i think he's got their absolute belief or he has their absolute um trust um, and, and it's a very formidable relationship. I've always rated Ben Davison. The addition of Lee Wiley has made him an even power, more powerful force as a trainer. Um, so, so for me, um, 
It's a terrific fight. That card's immense. Love the Tyler Denny narrative against Hamza Shiraz. I love the fact that Josh Kelly and uh, and Liam Smith are fighting at middleweight. Anthony Kakachin and 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 Josh Warrington will be thrilling as long as it lasts. I think Kakache wins that, but I think it'll be thrilling. What else have I missed on that card? I'd love to have seen Fabio Wardley and Fraser Clark fight on that card as well. Another big heavyweight title fight. Um, you know, um, that would have been great as well. Um, am, am I missing one of the fights on that card? Oh, Joshua Boatsy and uh, Willie Hutchinson. Never seen Joshua Boatsy so irked. Loved that as well. That's going to be a terrific fight. I think Joshua Boatsy edges that fight. Um, yeah, but I, I think Joshua's going to win, and I think he's going to win by knockout before round seven or eight. Uh I'm looking forward to it, Gareth. I think it's going oh, to be tremendous. fascinating build-up. Uh, the, the last thing I want to speak to you about, Gareth, because I think the time is same, got six minutes, but I think that's more than enough uh, time to speak about this subject. Um, Ryan Garcia went off completely off the rails, you know, whilst you've been taking your break. The uh, Obviously, the, the the comments that he made, um, offending black people and Muslims, and then he came back and apologised. I spoke to Spencer Fear on the other day, and I, and I said, you know, could... Could him being intoxicated be an excuse? And you know, Spencer used the example that not every drunk person goes out then and, and spouts things like that. And uh, being drunk isn't an excuse. And maybe he has them inner thoughts and inner feelings that came out because he was drunk. That was Spencer's um, viewpoint of it. I just want to get your understanding of what happened and, and whether his apology should be accepted. Ryan Garcia's. Yes. Um, yeah, look, he's not in a good place. He's admitted that and he's getting rehab. Um, you can never condone that kind of language. It's wrong. And his parents put out that statement through the WBC as well. And I got some um, Mauricio Suleiman circular on that as well. Um, he, he needs to get things regulated into his life. Look, his, his world's collapsed around him. Um, he has apologised to the mother of his children as well. Um, the problem is he's he's got 12 and a half million followers on Instagram. And um, I think he just should just close down his social media for a while and just go away and, and just go and be himself and look after himself and then come back well again. He's key in the seven princes, as I'm now calling them in America. He is key to... Keyshawn Davis, Tank Davis, Vasil Lomachenko, Tio Lopez, Devin Haney, and um, uh, who am I missing? Um, who am I missing there? Tank Davis, Keyshawn Davis, Tio Lopez, Devin Haney, Vasil Lomachenko, Shaka Stevenson, maybe I'm missing, and Ryan Garcia. They're, 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 they're a key group of figures. Um, seven princes as i'm calling them rather than the four kings and uh, as you know and i've told you this before between 1980 and 1989 the four kings hagler hearns leonard and duran fought nine times imagine how many times those seven guys can fight each other and ryan garcia is very much a linchpin in all of that and i know i'm not ask, answering your question by saying that but he needs to get himself well again because he's pivotal in that movement of young fighters do we accept his apology? Yes, we do. But he can't return to say these things again because they're not pretty. Um, they're very damaging. They're damaging more for him than anyone else. He's only hurting himself. Um, but because we know that where Ryan's from and we know that he has friends of colour, we know that he has friends of different ethnic and, and religious creeds around him. So to, to, to shoot your mouth off in that way is not clever. He knows it. He must know it deep down. Um, and, and being troubled isn't always an excuse for it, but he needs to go and just get help from the right people. And that's all it is. But if I was advising him now, I would just say, just have a little break from your social media. Just put a picture up once a month of, of yourself clean and with just a little comment without living your life out on social media. I think it's a bit of an addiction for people when you've got that bigger following as well. Um, and and it's it's probably something to lean on as well. And it's, it's a very dangerous thing. And we don't 
fully know yet how psychologically that affects people. Um, I mean, we don't know. We, we have followings. But it's, we, our life isn't centred around it. But I think it is very much with Ryan, and he lives his life out on social media. And obviously, I, I know him personally. I have a lot of time for him, a lot of love for Ryan Garcia, and I just want him to be well, and I want him to, him to fulfil his life. He's a very young man still, uh, under a lot of pressure. Well, I hope he watches uh, this, this, uh, this. I think he gave him some very good advice there, Gareth, like a wise man. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. The time is in. We've got 90 seconds left. Have you got anything you'd like to uh, leave us with? Peace and love, brother. Peace out.